Hey, it's Ray Niax, Mel the Train Shooter, back in the studio and back with another Let's Make for you. Now, in this Let's Make, we're back in the Battlefield Basic series and we're wrapping it up, looking at a final few things, including bunkers. Now, in this specific video, we're going to be looking at foam board bunkers and I'm going to be showing you some simple tricks to get some really cool effects. So, with that in mind, should we crack on? Come on. So we're going to be building our bunkers out of this stuff, 5 mil foam board or mounting board, okay? Now, quite I'm not talking about cutting it and making walls like you would with a foam board house, but the technique when making bunkers is you cut layers of this stuff and then stack them on top of each other and it replicates the sort of the mold lines from the pouring technique they used on the Atlantic wall when they were filling the bunkers because they made the bunkers, they basically made them out of like a wooden mold and then progressively poured them up. But this gave mold lines as the concrete seeped out between the planking of the mold. Okay, so we're going to be doing sort of a layered effect. Now, the way people normally approach this is that what they'll do is they'll come up with a template for their bunker, they'll put it onto the foam board, and then they'll cut the entire template out, and they'll repeat that, and they'll do the entire way up. We're not going to do that, because it's way too much hassle. What we're going to do is basically we're going to cut this into strips. Yeah, and we're going to end up with a load of strips like these. Now, there's a very special way of cutting them. You have to be precise. Okay, so use markers. And when you cut the strips, make sure that you use a nice sharp blade and then you keep the angle of the blade pretty low so you slice through it rather than drag through it because you want nice clean cuts on this. Once you've cut out all your individual pieces for your walls, and you're going to need about eight for the height of a bunker for 28 mil. Yeah, the next job is to glue them down. Now, a little bit of glue, PVA glue in between each of the pieces. And I've just got a bit of Lego here. And it's just a matter of pushing them in, pushing them down and pushing them up against the, the piece. And what that'll do is it'll give you a nice flat edge under that side. Yeah, so with that in mind, here's some I've already done. So straight off, yeah, using that technique, here we've got the back wall. We've then got the two side walls. And these are three inches and two and three quarter inches. Yeah, stacked eight high, so three and then five. And then we've got another wall. Yeah, exactly the same, all dry now. And then finally, we've got the front wall. Now for the front wall, it's exactly the same. This is four, four inches across. And all I've done is, as you see, after it's dried, I've come in with a blade and I've just trimmed down either there either side of there. And so once all those pieces are done, you've got your basic four walls of your bunker. I mean, you can add things like, uh, what do they call? The cover walls, I can't, flanking walls. Yeah, I think, I can't remember the name of it. Remind me in the comments. Once you've got your pieces, it's time to glue them together. Okay, now I've left these um, probably about half an hour to, to dry before chipping them and you know beveling them and that sort of stuff yeah now it's time to actually stick them down now for this i'm going to be using my standard epvc yeah expanded pvc foam board it is okay and all i've done is very quickly with a sharp knife just beveled the edges and then a little bit of sanding now the next job is obviously we need to put our bunker together so all we're going to do is we're going to put pva on the bottom obviously to put it down but also where it meets the other wall yeah so in this case I'm gonna put it's not gonna come out is it oh you get there we go so PVA on there and then PVA on that edge and that edge because that's where our walls are gonna join yeah so come along yeah plonk it down on the front just like that give it a wiggle spread that PVA out then all you're going to do is get your wall pieces, make sure I get the right ones. Yeah. I've got to make sure the flat edges are on the outside. Yeah, a little bit of PVA on the bottom. Yeah. And then we're just going to drop it down and push it in. Right. Hey? Right. I'll put the other bits together. So that's them all stuck down. Yeah, you can see it coming together. Now we've got some gaps. Yeah, we're gonna dress those once watch color all these pieces are dry. But the other thing that obviously it's missing is a bit of a roof. Now for the roof, dead simple. All I've done is I've cut out two pieces of our foam board and glued them firmly on top of each other with a bit of a weight. Once that was done, I took the corners off. 
yeah so it matches the front of our bunker and then all I've done is if I bring that up do you see the bevel all I've done is with a sharp blade I've come along and I've just cut 45 degrees yeah making sure that I cut above the bottom sheet of, uh, of cardboard of this top piece yeah so it is five mil down and five mil in that way 45 degree bevel yeah and then very quickly I just gave it a little light sand and that just smooths the edges off and it closes the cells a bit okay which makes it look a little bit more realistic and if we pop it on carefully because this isn't dried obviously we have that yeah looking good isn't it now what I need to do is I need to leave this to dry properly yeah because what we need to do next is fill some gaps with some filler so I'll see you in a minute. That's all dry now, and as you can see, it's looking rather good. Now you'll notice I've got some gaps in here, and a little pro tip, if you want to have really nice fancy looking walls, always make sure that you put your scraggy cuts, yeah, on the inside. People are less likely to see them that way, and that way you can give the illusion that you can do things like this really well, just like me. <laughs> right, next job you can see is, you can see that's a little bit shiny, and it's a bit different from that side. So if I bring that up, yeah, do you see the gaps and that sort of stuff? Okay, and if I bring it around there, looks a little bit more filler, yeah? What I've got here is, I've got some filler, yeah, uh, wall compound, joint compound, spackle. I've got a little bit of water. I'm just getting a brush, and what I'm doing is, I'm just coming along, I'm just brushing it into these gaps. Yeah. And what that'll do is it'll fill up the gaps in the foam. Yeah, it'll fill up the gaps, the little gaps in between the cot the, the watch of the foam board sheets. And it will make it when it dries, because filler has a bitty texture, it'll make it look a lot more like actual concrete rather than you know strips of foam board. So I'm gonna carry on doing this. I'll give it all the way over, and once it's done, I'll bring it back and show you. Yeah? So a little bit of filler, a little bit of water, brush it on and just use it to fill those gaps. See you shortly. Right guys, the filler's all dry and you can see the final results. So it blends all that foam in and you end up with those mold lines. Now I'll be honest with you, it's not perfect. I could have spent a little bit longer filling it in and making it perfect. You know, but you get the idea and as always, you know, I show you the techniques and you guys run away and make things far more beautiful. Now there is a little bit more work we've got to do on this before we start painting it up. And we need some battle damage in it. You can't have a bunker without bu bullet holes in it, can you? Now what I've got is I've got a cocktail stick, but what I've done is I've just snipped the end just a little. So it's not as long, just so I don't have to go as deep. And you need to do this bit after you've put on your watered down filler, because if you do it before, you'll fill the holes in when you do your filler. So all I'm gonna do is dead simple. Yeah, put in a couple of bullet holes. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. Yeah, a couple more there. When you do it, avoid the actual uh, cardboard of the foam board, yeah? If you try and sort of push through that, it's too stiff, it'll mess up. Right, the other thing is obviously a little bit of battle damage. Now, a bit like clump foliage it is when you're making mistake building rocks. Battle damage is the same thing when you're building bunkers. So I've got this sort of corner here and it's a bit gnarly. So what I'll do is, yeah, a little cut from one side. Yeah, it will be a little bit stiffer with it having filler on. That's okay. And just pop it out. Don't worry about the foam coming through and anything like that. Yeah, we're going to put some paint on it so it'll look fine. And just gnaw the edges a bit. Yeah, and I'll do the same somewhere here. Yeah, so come in from one side. Come in from the other side. Pick it out. Yeah, and gnaw the edges. Gnaw. Gnaw's a nice word, isn't it? And there you have it. It's as simple as that, guys. Right, next thing that we need to do is to get this all painted up. And with that, yeah, we'll do it in the pictures. First, we give it a base coat of really dark grey with a little bit of PVA added in. It's going to take two coats to give it a proper solid coat. Once the grey's done, I added a dark brown to the ground. And then it was time to start dry brushing up with a mid-grey and then a successively lighter greys. Once the greys were done, I started to weather it up with a little bit of watered down brown. This was 
spread around the base of it, across the top, adding a few little splashes into all the recesses and then with a little thin down brown, yeah, I drew in some dirt streaks coming down from the roof. Once that was dry, it was time to flock it, and for that I used my standard three-tone technique. Yeah, but a little light, a little dark, and then a mid-green, all glued down with PVA. Once the flock was done, we added some simple tufts and some clump foliage, and then hit sealed it off with a little bit of watered-down PVA. And there she is, all done, guys. So if I bring it up to the camera. Yeah, doesn't she look beautiful? Yeah, obviously there's little bits and I could have done a bit better in a few places. As always, guys, you know, I know you guys are going to pick this up and going to do a hell of a lot better than I am with it. Yeah, but those are the basic techniques. So, there you have it. There's our bunker. Yeah, let's wrap this up, eh? So there you have it folks, some really simple techniques to put together some awesome looking foam board bunkers that replicate that sort of poured concrete style. Okay, remember, yeah, you need to plan this out in advance so you know what sort of size strips you're gonna need. I always do it in a one-to-one -one scale with a model, you know, so you actually work it out. Yeah, quit your strips in advance and then remember, Lego and stack them on the side and leave them to dry. Stacking them on the side will give you that nice flat edge, yeah, which is a lot better than sort of jaggedy. So if your cutting isn't that brilliant, you can make sure the outside of your bunkers always looks great. Remember to leave the stacks to completely dry before you start taking bits off and beveling them and doing things like that. And when it comes to adding the filler, less is more. You can always do a thin coat and then, you know, come back and add another coat if it isn't enough. If you put too much on, you can, it's a bit difficult to get it off, you know what I mean. Now they're the basic techniques. Beyond that, it's simple dry brushing and flocking, guys, and you all know how to do that. Yeah, and if you don't, check out the Back to Basics tutorials. There's tons in there. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, obviously, I'm expecting you guys to pick this up, run with it, and make some beautiful stuff. And if you do, drop some pictures in the Terraniacs Facebook group. Yeah, the link's down below. So, with that in mind, yeah, like it if you like it. Share it if you know anyone who might find this useful. If you've got any questions or anything to add to it, that's what the comment's for. And finally, guys, if you really do like these videos, yeah, then please... Be consider becoming one of those guys that, you know, one of the good folk that put their hand in the pocket and support the channel and make all these videos possible, you know. Either by jumping on Patreon, which is like a one dollar a month thing, yeah, but it all clubs together to keep the lights going and keep producing videos for you guys. Or if you're not into a monthly thing, jump down below. There's a PayPal. You can send a one-off. Either way, it all helps with keeping the lights on, materials coming to the to the watcher desk and tutorials flowing to you. So in the meantime, Please consider jumping on board, guys, and I will say, I'll see you in the next tutorial real soon, guys. All the best, yeah? Terra.